people are really what the Army strength is. So it's always a chance to learn and also a chance to teach. It was a tremendous opportunity for the battalion to really get after some true uh, expeditionary readiness. Because I think the benefit of uh, doing this is the uncertainty. It's safe to say that folks look up to the American Army and it's safe to say that sometimes we are, uh, we are amongst peers. Partnerships are really what's important as we operate uh, in that type of environment. Being able to build those relationships on the ground really uh, creates a gener generational change and really uh, reinforces the partnerships that we have. But more importantly, I think for our partners, just our presence there and participating in this operation is building that trust and confidence that, that we are there by their side. So we worked with the Australians, uh, New Zealanders as well, uh, while we were in Australia, um, as well as the Indonesian and Malaysian Army. Uh, so we worked you know, with our Thai counterparts um, and then also with our Philippine counterparts when we got down there as well. Uh, so it's a chance to teach uh, what we know as our aviation standards and also a chance to observe and learn what they do. Uh, to see their equipment, to see how they're training. Uh, there was all kinds of challenges that we were able to work through, and I think that's the beauty of the Pacific Pathways mission, is um, there's a lot of uncertainty, and it challenges your leaders to work through the uncertainty um, using adaptive uh, you know, problem-solving skills, especially for our young leaders. Uh, the Malaysian jungle really can't be replicated anywhere but in Malaysia, so us being on the ground there gave us the opportunity to uh, really feel the stress of some of the challenges of the jungle presents uh, logistically, communications-wise, uh, really across all, all warfighting functions. It really uh, gave us a, an opportunity to really uh, work on, on some of those challenges and, and come up with some solutions at the tactical level. Uh, so we know where we're going and we know when we're leaving, but it, it was really a challenge to figure out all the logistically how to make all those moving pieces synchronize, not once, not twice, but for me as an aviator, seven times. We moved seven aircraft, two CH-47s, and five, four UH-60s, one HH-60. And so we island hopped down to the island of Panay. Typically, we would have run out of fuel in a situation like that, but it was a joint exercise coordinated. So we received fuel from a uh, Marine Corps Osprey and Air Force C-130. And then meanwhile, while this air movement was going on uh, to the island of Panay, Marines being, being carried by the Navy did a beach assault, seized the airfield, uh, Air Force set up, you know, air traffic control and brought us in and then we postured for um, a hybrid air, uh, air assault the, the following day. I would grade our unit as doing very well. So probably A, A minus. Um, but I think the great thing is we're a learning organization. All Army units are. And just the ability to go out there, go on this deployment as part of the pathways, you bring those lessons learned home. And you know our ability to grow from that as a formation, it's made us more lethal, it's made us more ready. And uh, so you know, while I give it probably an A minus, what it's allowed us to do is later on build off of that and, and bring the unit to another level, which is what we are trying to do always, because we have to be ready to go at any time. You know, you say, well, we really could have done some things better. And you, you know, kind of like, hey guys, this is about a C, we're about average. But by the time you do it, you know, for the third or fourth time in Korea, you're like, we have got this locked down. We are an A plus, no doubt. So you keep the good things, you flush the bad things, you pass on the information, and you just hope the organization stays well oiled. When we got on the ground, once they clearly understood our capabilities, then they, they were able to just leverage those in a greater manner. And the same um, goes for our understanding of their capabilities. So, I mean, that's, again, one of the larger benefits of the Pacific Pathways is understanding each other's capabilities and being able to leverage those. Our partners bring a lot to the fight, and we can learn a lot from them. And as these soldiers move forward, you know, I heard those discussions going on in the barracks later on about how appreciative they were of that experience and that opportunity to get out there and see that. And, and it's going to have an impact on the formation for years to come. One of the big benefits of Pacific Pathways, like I said, in addition to really getting us into that expeditionary mindset and the development of young adaptive leaders, uh, was the demonstration of the range of diversity that the Pacific Theater presents, geographically, culturally, linguistically. Uh, really, us being able to go through these three exercises consecutively on one deployment really demonstrated to us the, the range of uh, different challenges and opportunities that the Pacific area uh, presents. Uh, so I know that our leaders grew both professionally and personally from this experience. 
And uh, I know a lot of them would, um, they speak very highly of it, and if they get the opportunity to do it again, they would welcome it. As we look forward to developing an expeditionary mindset, um, it's operations like this, Pacific Pathways, that are going to train our leaders how to keep that expeditionary mindset, give them the skills to which succeed in austere environments, and it's going to make our formations more lethal. That's the brilliance and the magic of Pathways. Not only are you getting this readiness, but continuing those relationships that just you know, help the region, help strengthen our partnerships is uh, pretty amazing.